start. Um, there is an incredible encounter in John chapter 4. We know it as the woman at the well, Samaritan woman. And I just want to set it up for the, ho- for the house today by simply saying this. There's a neat exchange between her and Jesus. And later in that chapter, in verses 22 and 23, Jesus says that there's coming a day where you will neither worship me on this mountain or in Jerusalem, but the true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. For they, watch these words, are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Mm. So you've come from work, come from your busy day, already Wednesday, fast week, man. So we're back in the house. The true worshipers, Jesus said, worship in spirit and truth, for they are the kind the Father looks for. So as the Father walks in these doors, may he find us worshiping him in spirit and in truth. That's what we're here for. So wherever you've got to do to posture yourself, posture your heart, position yourself, position your heart to have an encounter with a living God because he wants to meet with his true worshipers tonight. And so our desire as we gather is not to stare at Stephen and clap at him because we love him, but to encounter Jesus. And if we do that, he says, I'll meet you there. So let's meet Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And God, we're going to take you up on what you say because your heart is after true worshipers Mm -hmm. that worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, may you find the church tonight meeting with you. May we do it in spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in the house. May we do it in truth. Truth's name, Jesus. And God, we want everyone to encounter you tonight. So right now, we strip away everything that our mind's attention may be on. And we turn our mind's attention, our heart's affection to the one king. His name is Jesus who is walking into the room right now. And may he meet with us tonight. And may he find us and call us the true worshipers tonight. Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. We adore you. We magnify you. We make much of you. Meet with us now. Your kids are waiting in Christ's name. Amen, amen. Let's worship. Hey, let's stand. I was... Everybody okay? Good, good, ready? Are you ready to do some like actually worshiping Jesus? Yeah, let's break the ice, okay? Um, He's actually here and we get to worship him. It's crazy, amazing. Uh, Don't lose sight of that. Don't just be like, I'm at a thing, watching a thing, okay? (laughs) You're in the presence of Jesus and we get to sing to him together, right? Not just me, we. I was, um, you can, many of you guys might know already, you know, I was raised an evangelist son and, and we would do all these church camps when I was a kid and um, I didn't like it, <laughs> but I, I liked this part, like the old, the hymns, they would do all the old hymns, right? And it was weird, I actually enjoyed a lot of that. But when I gave my life to Jesus, when I got older and I, I really meant it, I mean, I really loved him still loving, but I was in this place where I started realizing those songs, they all sung about Jesus, many of them, but not to him. Now don't get the gaithers on me, y'all. Take it easy. I'm just, (laughs) I'm just saying, I noticed that and I love what they're saying, but I want to talk to him because he's here, right? Can we do that? Because you live I can face tomorrow because you live. Oh, fear is gone because I know. together to him, okay? Oh, because you live, oh, I can face 
Some of y'all, you're 80. Feels like you were eight yesterday, <laughs> right? This thing, this thing called life is so fast. You will blink and be in his presence and you will say, nothing matters more than you. Nothing ever did. I let a fear about what people think keep me from giving you everything I am. But we don't have to just say, someday I'll see. Right now, we get to say it till we mean it, maybe. <laughs> There's nothing better than you. Nothing. Think about the thing you want in this world. Maybe, maybe you say Jesus, but you know what I mean. That thing that if you just had that, you would be happy. It is going to seem like rags next to Jesus. So here we go. Oh, there's nothing, sing down, better than, oh, there's nothing, better than, oh, there's nothing, sorry when I didn't mean it, God, nothing is better than you, I want to mean it now. right now that I want more than you tear it down burn that thing to the ground make me miserable so I can start to see that you're all that matters so I can start to see you're the only thing that really matters I don't need to build anything else with my hands I want you to build it so tonight Jesus in this place let every home represented here be a home that wants you more than anything else. From the babies, to the mom, to the dad, to the grandparents, <laughs> to the grandbabies, God. Let everyone want you more than anything. Let it be a generation, and I don't just mean generation Z, alpha, whatever. I'm talking every generation alive now. This generation, may it want you more than anything. May it really desire you, Jesus. I don't want a candidate, I want a king. I want you, Jesus. Help us to hear the songs already being sung in heaven and join in. You worthy of it all. You worthy of it all. For from you all things, to you all things, you deserve the glory. You worthy of it all. Praise is God. 
saints and all the saints and angels bow before your throne and all the elders God the crown before of God and sin, you worthy of it all.
lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. Let your glory come down. We lift you up. We lift you up. Let your glory come down. We lift you up. We lift you up. Oh. Let your glory come down. We lift you up. We lift you up. Just play. Let the Holy Spirit minister. Come on. afraid this isn't we're not going to make you like trust fall or anything just put your but if you want to like, seriously if you need to know god as a healer put your hand in the air everyone around that person right now that has the spirit of god in them put your hands on them right now put your hands down them if you see them get your hands on them or out towards them this isn't a spectator thing where if you have the spirit of god in you man he loves these people and he loves you and all I'm going to do is no kind of funny business. Just We're just going to sing something and declare his name over your body, over your destiny, over your future, over your family. Lord, I love you for being Jehovah Rapha. I know sometimes this broken world, we see broken things, but I'm not going to beg you and plead with you. I'm not going to worry about outcomes. I'm simply going to declare your name in your nature, despite what I see in this world, despite what people say, despite what doctors say, despite what the news says, I am going to declare who you are right now over this person. Would you just say right now, everyone in this room, pray and say, Jesus, come on, we can do better. Jesus, I love you for being Jehovah Rapha, the God who he and I thank you for healing this person. In Jesus' name. Now we sing it. God, you over. To Trust you. 
guys doing all right? <laughs> oh, we just got hit by the worship truck, right? Oh, man. There is power in the name of Jesus. We say this. Well, you guys want to sit down? I feel like I've been mean to you. I didn't even think you say anything. You guys sit down for a minute. I didn't think about it because I was sitting down the whole time. <laughs> Had I been standing too, I'd have been like, man, I'm tired. Let's all sit down. You know, we sing these songs, right? And sometimes they just become songs. They just become things we say and we forget that they mean something. We're singing, really we're singing the power of Jesus, right? We're declaring his nature. Think about that, his nature. He's the source, right? Have you ever wanted to feel good in your life? A bunch of lying heathens, there you go. Yeah, that's right. You've wanted God and you didn't know it. When Moses went up on the mountain, he said, God, show me your glory. Of all the words God could have used, he said, I will let all of my goodness go before you. He's the very source of the thing. For some of you, you're like, wait a minute, he's the thing I thought he didn't want me to have? <laughs> Get your head around that for a minute. You know what I mean? He's the source. So when we sing the name of Jesus, we're not just saying a name. We're saying everything. We're saying love, the very source of love. We're saying peace, the very source of peace, right? So when we speak Jesus' name, it is not just something. This is the reason why I feel so wrong when you hear somebody use it in vain, right? You hear it like in just some kind of flipping way. It's the name above all names. One day, every tongue, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Not some knees, not some tongues. Everyone, even those that say they don't believe now, will fall on their feet before him and they see him in his glory. And we will all realize just how powerful the name Yeshua, Jesus, really is. So right now we might see in a mirror darkly, dimly. One day we'll see fully as we're known fully, as it says in Corinthians, right? But right now when we sing this name, remember, it literally changes things. It changes the atmosphere. Okay, so as we sing this song right now, I speak Jesus, right? When we say these words, don't let it just go by like, oh, I know this song, this is catchy. No, we're speaking the name of Jesus and it is going to change things, right? Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus.
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. y'all sit down. That was stupid. <laughs> Go ahead and sit down again, though. You can sit down again. And then you're going to have to get up again, so I'll just... We're just going to treat it like a jazzercise class, okay? Just going to greet your neighbor. All right. So, um, back in the beginning of the pandemic, I was home like everybody else, right? And I had my Bible open in front of me. Uh, make me sound more spiritual. Key of G. Listen to that. Come on. You know what I mean? Holy, holy. Makes everything sound more spiritual. There we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was, I was home. I had my Bible open on, my, on my, my piano, you know, and I was just trying to just worship Jesus. You know, not just anything else, just that. And I had it open to Revelation 22, and I was reading. You know how you read the Bible sometimes? You'll read something over and over and over again, and then just one day you read it, you're like, how did I miss that, right? You know what I mean? So even though you've read it a million times, one day just something clicks. Well, one day I was reading Revelation 22, and I got to verse 17. It says, the Spirit and the Bride says, come. Let's try that again. Spirit and the Bride says, some of y'all are like, some <laughs> Hoping nobody noticed. <laughs> it's okay. The spirit and the bride says, come. The spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of God is saying, come, Jesus. Right? This is not just something we should want, and we should want it, because it says the Spirit and the Bride, that's us, the church, we are called to join in, but it's something that God wants. He wants us to long for Jesus to return. That blew my mind. You guys have heard me maybe talk about this before, because I've been here before, and by the way, I love being here. This is awesome. I can't believe I got to come back. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I love it. We've been like, what is this, like third time? Something like that? And I'm back again in April. I did something right or wrong. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, you know, when I, re when I read that, I realized something. I was like, man, I'm really bad at wanting Jesus to come back. I'm good at all the other stuff. I'm good at grace, the cross. I get it, right? But then I realized something too, man. You know that it mentions, don't, don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you facts, all right? You know, it mentions the return of Jesus more than the cross in the New Testament. Did you know that? It mentions, references the cross around 48 times. It references the return of Christ over 318 times. Think about that. Now, why? It does not diminish the power of the cross. The cross is how we are saved, right? It pays, it atones for our sin. But the return of Jesus is the finished work of everything. Everything that feels broken and wrong and in the core of who you are, you know it. Jesus is the longing. It says all creation is groaning for the sons and daughters to be revealed. That's actually talking about the sons and daughters to be revealed on the day Christ returns in the fullness of his glory and the fullness of the way he meant us to be, right? I said meant us to be. I made up a whole word just then. Please be impressed. But, <laughs> and I thought about it for a minute. I was like, man, over 300 times. And you know what I think? There's a lot of reasons. I know there's a lot of books written on it. Philippians 3.20, I think it says, I have student loan debts for Bible college. <laughs> so I should know this. <laughs> it says we are not citizens of this earth. We are citizens of heaven. And we eagerly await the return of our Lord. And I thought about it. The disciples longed to see their friend again. I want to long to see my friend. I want to long to see my king. And don't, I, mean, I know the one thing people always say, what about the lost? We got a lot of work to do, Stephen. I promise you, the Lord loves them and was more concerned about them than you are. <laughs> And it says that he's not slow as we think of slow. It says in 2 Peter, he's not slow as we think of slow. He's patient, wanting no one to be lost. But it's on us. If we really long for Jesus to return, you want to know what? You're going to love people better towards his return. You're going to start building things that actually matter towards his return. Right? We're not going to be hunkered down in some bunker eating beans. <laughs> We can do better, by the way, with our bunker food than beans, I feel like. But, <laughs> you know, we're going to breathe. You're going to see what really matters, right? So Jesus, the Spirit and the Bride say, come. There's a reason, Father. And it's because I long to see my friend. I long to see you, my King. And right now as we play this song, I pray, Jesus, that people wouldn't just listen to a song, but that you would stir in them a longing for your return. Jesus. I'm, I'm gonna say this to you real quick, guys. I am convinced that revival, the thing we always pray about, right, is directly connected to two things, repentance and a longing for Jesus to return. When I started going live on TikTok a couple of years, like last year, um, till today, we've been going live on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all that. We've seen at this point now, 37,000 people come to Jesus because of a song about the return of Jesus. And don't give me credit. This is because there's something going on in the earth, not just something going on in me, right? What is God doing? Something's going on, guys, and he's calling on us. You can feel that pull, feel stronger than ever to either come to him, right? For some of you feel like running, please don't. Run to him, fall into him. He longs to return and he longs to see you when he returns, right? Sometimes I fall to 
my knees and pray. Come, Jesus, come. Let today be the day. Sometimes I feel like I'm gonna pray, but I'm holding on to a hope that won't fade. Come, Jesus, come.
praise your holy name. Right now, I just want to, everybody just sit down, sit down for a moment. Just stay in the presence of Jesus for just a minute. Um, do me a favor for a second. I'll stay back here. Like, guys, that drives them insane. I won't do that. <sighs> Close your eyes for just a moment, please. I don't want you to focus on anybody around you. It's just you and Jesus right now. We just sing these songs tonight, right? And we're not done. We're going to sing just a little bit more about, but I, I don't want to just do this and not also do this, okay? I'm going to ask you a question that I believe the Lord asks you, okay? Don't worry about what anybody thinks. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray something right now. Spirit of the fear of man, spirit that cares more about what people think than what God thinks, leave this room right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're the one that calls. You're the one that convicts. You're the one that does it. Not me, it's you. Right now, Father, have your way. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes on him. I want you to literally imagine Jesus in front of you right now. It sounds like whatever, but I'm being serious. Some of the guys in the room are like, oh my gosh, really? I'm being serious. Take a moment. Imagine Jesus in front of you right now. And if you see someone with their arms crossed and a look of disappointment, start over. Start over till you see the real thing. Start over till you see the one just in his eyes, you can see this intimate knowing of you. Not in a way where you're like, uh-oh, but in a way where you know he loves you despite all the things that you think have disqualified you. Do not rush this. This could be the most important thing you do all night. Just see. And hear him ask you this question. Do you want to know what you look like fully alive? the real you, the you that he spoke before the foundation of the earth. As you see, do you want to know who you really are? The you free of fear, of depression, of anxiety, the real you the you full of hope, the you full of real joy, real peace, the real you. Do you want to give your life to him tonight? Are you ready to stop running from your destiny tonight? Some of you in here tonight, listen, your family the Lord has a destiny and a purpose for his, your family. And it's you fully alive. The real you. You're tired of the one that you are right now, the fake thing, the thing you're trying to make work. It's exhausting. I know because I was in addiction and hated God. I was in addiction for over 11 years. I was a crystal meth addict, hated Christianity, had a radical encounter with the presence of God at three o'clock in the morning in a room with drugs and gave my life to him. Never looked back because I believed him when he said to me, Stephen, you won't do it. I'll do it. Tonight, do you want to see him do it? 
right now, with your eyes closed, everybody stand up. Just stand up where you are right now. If you're in this room right now, please hear me, man. Remember what we said at the beginning, one day you're gonna blink and you're gonna be in his presence. Nothing is gonna matter more than him. Please don't tonight let the fear about what some person thinks keep you from your destiny, from becoming who you're really meant to be. And if you're like, man, you're not going to trick me. I know who I am. I've lived enough life. I've figured me out. Hear me on this. <laughs> you can't know who you really are till you're in Jesus. So tonight, right now, guys, no mess around. I'm in West Texas, so we're not even gonna play, okay? Right now, if you wanna be a real man, if you wanna be a real woman, if you wanna be a real son and daughter of God, right now, if you wanna give your life to Jesus, raise your hands right now in Jesus' name. If you wanna give your life to Jesus, put your hands up. Do not be afraid about what anybody thinks. Right now, everybody, if you wanna give your life to Jesus tonight, this is it. We're done. You're gonna surrender it all. Right now, come up to the front of the stage without fear. I don't care if you're a deacon, believe me, if you wanna give your life to Jesus tonight, if you are a deacon, they want you up here, <laughs> okay? So come now, no fear about what people think. If you wanna give your life to Jesus, come on. If you wanna give your life to Jesus right now, come on, no fear about what people think. Seriously, shut it down. There is power in going, you know what? I don't care what anybody thinks but God. There is power. This is it, okay? Right now, if you wanna give your life to Jesus, come on up, come on up here with these guys. Don't be afraid, it's okay, everybody up here. Right now, I saw some of you out there still with your hands up. This is not meant to embarrass you. This is not meant to shame you. I don't have a get people saved quota where I get commission, okay? <laughs> it's like, I don't get Jesus bucks for everybody that comes up here. Listen. None of this matters. You are what matters. Do you hear me? All the streams, I've been Christian music, I've been doing this thing a long time. Jesus can burn it all to the ground if people will come to him through my life. People are what matter, right? You matter. And if you feel like, you know, your whole life is like, you've just been getting kicked while you're down one hard thing after another. Sometimes the size of your destiny is seen by the size of the attack on your life. You might be pretty dangerous for the kingdom of God, right? So one more time, if you wanna give your life to Jesus right now, this is it, okay? Now everybody in this room that has the spirit of God in them, I want you to get up here and get your hands on these people and actually love on them because not, I'm not the professional, okay? Let's go, come on. And let's actually act like nobody died, okay? Come on. I mean, they're gonna die and Jesus is gonna live in them. <laughs> so I guess, okay, fine. All right, ready? Come on up. I'm gonna have you do something, all right? <laughs> oh, adorable, oh my gosh. All right, you guys ready? Are we good? Everybody in this room good? I don't know what you came for, but this is why I'm here, okay? Not so people could clap at a song that I sang. It's so we can clap with heaven when people come to him, right? So tonight, let's do this. Everybody up here giving your life to Jesus. I love you guys. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. It doesn't matter. Trust me, I'm in my 40s now. I'm starting to really get into this whole who cares what people think thing. Like, <laughs> trust me, my kids will tell you. But it doesn't matter. What God has for you is so amazing. Some of you younger people here, it's not a million. Right now, I'm gonna say this. For the younger people up here right now, please listen for one minute. This is not, look at me, it's okay. You're not in trouble. Look at me, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My nine-year-old is like, don't look at me. All right, listen. This is not just a, a thing you're doing. This isn't just an emotional moment. God is intentional in all these things, okay? So don't worry about what anybody thinks. You don't have to wait to be older to go after the deep things of God, man. Even at a young age, you can learn more languages than I can before you're 13. <laughs> it's because you're able. It's why Jesus said, let the young children come to me. You guys are far more pliable 
far more moldable in his love and in his purpose for your life. So don't, don't act like you're less because you're little. The Lord has a lot for you, and I'm super proud of you guys, okay? Right now, what I want you to do is I want you to repeat after me at the top of your lungs like you're yelling at somebody, like you're mad at it. You ready to go? I don't guess you, okay, fine. <laughs> of course, it's the library, apparently. Okay, you ready? Repeat after me. Say, Jesus! Jesus! I believe! I believe! That you are the Christ! The Son of the Living God, my Lord and Savior, that you gave your life for me, that you died for me on the cross, that you rose from the grave. Now hold up on this one. Don't repeat after me. Everybody goes, now hold up on this one. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to say, I repent. I'm gonna say this to you before you say that, okay? I just wanna say this real quick. When you hear repent, you probably think, uh-oh, I'm in trouble, but don't. In the Bible, every time repentance is mentioned, blessing is attached to it. Every time you turn away, it says in Acts 3, 19, 20, it says repent so that the time of refreshment can come from the Lord. On the other side of repentance is life. So here we go, say, Jesus, I repent, I repent. of all my sins. And I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God glory like you mean it? Come on. Hey, listen. All right. Everybody that just gave their life to Jesus, we are so proud of you. We love you. I want everybody to pray for them just before you leave, just right now. We're going to pray for these people before we go back to our seats, okay? But all of you just gave your life to Jesus. Please don't just say some words and disappear into the, into the ether, okay? Make sure you connect with the leaders here at this church. Go to this door over here before you leave tonight. We're gonna sing one more song. You can stay for that, but you gotta go over there to them before you leave, okay? Got it? Are we on the same page? Good deal. Now I'm gonna say this to you too. When you get to your room tonight, you know you're in your bed and you turn the lights off and everything's more real than it normally is. Some of you that are older, you're like, that's that time where like the lights are on and you're like thinking thoughts like, <laughs> I'm gonna die someday. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. In that moment, May the presence of God be more close to you than he even is right now. All right, everybody right now, I want you to pray out loud for these people. Go, come on. Right, all of you that have just given your life to Jesus, I want you to go right over here, right now to these doors. Don't, don't, don't do anything else. Go, go to your left, right over here. Everybody, parents with the little ones. You're gonna miss this last song, but we're gonna sing it in heaven together. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be all good, okay? Can you guys give them a hand for real? Come on.
have your way tonight, Father. Thank you for what you've done. I pray that nobody leaves and says, wow, what a great worship man. Man, Stephen's so handsome, but... <laughs> Why are y'all laughing so hard at that one? But I, pray that, I pray that everybody that leaves tonight would leave and say, God is so real. Jesus is so highly exalted. That you would be overwhelmed by his presence just on the ride home. Right? Father, I just want to right now bless everyone in this room in the name of Jesus. May your presence, God, rest on these people every family in this room, every child in this room, every husband, every mother, every grandparent, in Jesus' mighty name, every friend today, let a reality, overwhelming awareness of your presence overtake their life, God, in a way where there are no more just typical days. But their every day is with you and an awareness of you with them, Jesus. We bless this church, the church of Bush, Bushland right now in Jesus' mighty name, that this place would be the birthplace of revival in this area, that it would be a place overwhelmed, that it would be a place pouring over with oil in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray this. And all God's people said, amen. Come on. Well, amen. We're so thankful that you came tonight. Man, there's some good things that can come from Kentucky, amen? Um, and so, uh, only thing we make got him more in, Hey, turn his mic off so he can't talk with me, all right? Um, hey, how am I, how, is Stephen not just an awesome man? It, blessing to have him in Texas tonight. And so, also just, this is our worship band. Every week, our volunteers, they took a night out of the week also, two nights out of the week to prepare for this, to make Stephen look good. So, um, very, very thankful for their time and effort. Um, remember this tonight. Um, you are not being dismissed. You're being sent. Um, anytime the Lord does something what he did tonight, you're being sent. You should be excited for what's facing tomorrow, right? Because he lives, all right?